Hello, and thank you for joining me on Joining an Active Directory Domain by Charles Dudo. Let's get the About Me part out of the way. To sum it up, I'm a young man with an interest in technology. I'm constantly experimenting to learn more about IT and computers, hence why I'm taking Udemy classes all the time, and I've been building computers on my own for about 14 years now. I have a master's degree in digital media innovation from Texas State University. I taught the FDOM and web design lab sections there. FDOM is the fundamentals of digital and online media, and I think you know what web design is. I also have the CompTIA A plus IT certification. It's the go-to for people trying to get into IT. And right now I'm actually studying for the Network Plus and Security Plus, and I hope to have those both done in the first half of 2019. I'm actually shooting for a late January date for the Network Plus. So who is this video for? Well, if you're like me, you're taking Paul Hill's class on Active Directory Domains, and you found out that he never actually taught us how to join the Active Directory domain that we made. When you started taking this class, you probably ignored a few red flags before getting this far. Not to rip on you too much, Paul. But first, I noticed there were dead links to the VMs that we were supposed to use for this class. And if you're like me, you probably did a little Googling and found the updated link. The other red flag I noticed, Windows Server 2019 has been out, but we're still learning the 2016 version. And before I made this video, I actually found out that his website has been moved. It redirects to a new website. And also, if you view his profile, there's a lot of dead links on there as well. So definitely a few red flags here that made me think his class must have been abandoned. And if you're just somebody experimenting with Active Directory domain in a VM environment, I guess this is for you as well. Let's talk about what you'll need before we start. First and foremost, you'll need to have a Windows Server set up with Active Directory Domain. I assume if you're taking the Udemy class, you'll have made it this far. Second of all, you'll need to have created a user account with sufficient privileges to join the domain we've made. And I would say completing Section 3 of Paul Hill's class would give you enough information to get this far, although we'll look over that a little bit as well. Also, you'll need to download a Windows 10 VM to join our domain and I'll provide you a download link in the description of this video. I'll also show you how to configure this VM with optimal settings, and then we'll boot into this VM and actually join the domain. So, without further ado, let's get started. So like I said, we'll need a Windows 10 virtual machine to connect to our domain. And so, this will be the link up here that I'll provide in the description for you to download this virtual machine. And it's super easy to download. Just go to Virtual Machine. We'll go ahead and pick Windows 10. And for our platform, assuming you're taking the Udemy course with me, we're going to go ahead and select VirtualBox. And then we'll click Download. We'll just save that to the desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. And whenever it's done, we'll resume. OK, so our download is complete. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this browser. Open the zip file we downloaded. And now I'm going to extract that to the desktop. This will take a moment, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Okie dokie, now that that is extracted, we'll just give it a quick double click. It'll automatically open up VirtualBox, and we're just going to hit Import. Now this will take a moment, so I'm going to pause the video, and then we'll resume. Okay, now that our VM is imported, let's go ahead and adjust its settings. So we'll right-click our new VM, click Settings, and we'll go down here to Network. Now, if you recall, on the Windows Server, we had set up a NAT network, so let's switch this to NAT network, and let's make sure it's the right NAT network. I have two because I'm doing another class as well. All right. Now, this next part you don't have to do, but I like to do it because it should improve system performance. Let's go over to the System tab, then the Processor sub tab, and we'll go ahead and boost this up to two CPU cores because I've got a pretty beefy system over here. Now, I've also noticed that this VM actually comes with invalid settings. You can mouse over here and see exactly what's misconfigured. So let's go over to the Display tab. And I'm going to give this 128 megs of VRAM. And I'm going to switch the graphics controller to this one right here. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And because this is the right configuration, what I want to do is create a snapshot. So I'm already on the tab, but right here, go over to Snapshots. We will hit Take. And we're going to call this one Fresh Install. And in the description, we'll say, never been booted, extra CPU, and VRAM. What this will let us do 
is we can always restore to this snapshot in case we mess this system up, which hopefully won't happen. Now, before we boot into this VM, I actually wanted to revisit our Windows 2016 server real quick. Now, as you recall, Paul Hill had us adjust the networking configuration of our server when we first set it up. So, let's mouse down here to the Ethernet icon, our network icon. We'll right-click this, open the Network and Sharing Center, and what we'll do is we'll click on Ethernet, and then we'll hit Properties, and then we'll go over here to IP version 4, hit Properties again, and remember we had these settings set up. So we made sure that the uh, server had an IP address of 192.168.0.10. And it's going to be very important that we remember this moving forward. So before we move on to our client, I wanted to take a quick look at Active Directory users and computers. I've created a organizational unit called IT and Engineering. And if you take a quick look, it is actually a member of administrators. And if you look over here at my user, Charles Dudo, under Properties, he's a member of this group, IT and Engineering, so he is an administrator. It's important that you configure your user to have appropriate permissions to be able to join the domain. And if you go through Section 3 of Paul Hill's class, you'll definitely be able to do that yourself. I just wanted to look over this real quick so you understood what I had to do to make this user able to join the network. Now we'll go ahead and move on to our Windows 10 client. Okay, so here is our Windows 10 client, and the default password to this is password with a capital P, and the O is replaced with a zero, and there's an exclamation point at the end. So that right there, that is our password to this VM. Let's go ahead and log in. Okay, so now that I've gotten the VM to resize, let's go ahead and change the network settings of this VM. Let's go down here to our network. Let's open Network Internet Settings. This is a little different than the uh, Windows Server. We will click Change Connection Properties. And then we'll hit Back. And then we will change Adapter Options. And this will open up this tab. We'll right click here. Go down to Properties. We'll go down to IP version 4. Hit Properties again. Now it's important to remember the settings that we looked at from the server. So let's go down here to use the following DNS server. We're going to change this to 192.168.0.10. Now that's going to be important for connecting to our Active Directory domain, so make sure that you set this appropriately, all right? Now this next page we're going to go to to adjust this system. There's a lot of ways of getting there, but I found here's an easy way. Let's just open up this PC. We'll right click and go to properties and then we'll go to advanced system settings. Now it's very important that we run the VM, the server VM at the same time. Let's go over to computer name and right here to rename this computer or change its domain or work group click change. So let's click change. Now we're gonna go to member of a domain and we'll type in our domain name. In my case it's amperagemedia.net we'll hit OK it's gonna ask for a username and password my username was Charles Dudo and I'll enter my password real quick and we'll hit OK welcome to the amperagemedia.net domain fantastic now we'll have to restart to apply the changes but from here you're pretty much set up on the domain all right, now that my system is updated and rebooted, we're going to sign into the domain. So this right here, IE user, that's the local account that came with our VM. What we'll do is we'll go down here to other user and we'll put our username in that we created on the domain and we'll enter our password. As you can see, we log in, no problem. It says we're going to get things set up for you. And from this point, yeah, we're connected to the domain. I hope that this has been helpful because Paul Hill did overlook this in the tutorial. So if this worked for you, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If any more issues come up in the class, I'll try and create videos for those as well. But here we are. We're on the domain.